visit to a modern Midwestern farm today often reveals a picture of technology and automation. Huge, expensive equipment using complicated hydraulics and power coming from massive engines allows a single farm to put thousands of acres under cultivation. But it wasn't always that way. In the beginning, the land was rough, uneven, filled with rocks and woods, and had to be tamed. You are listening to a podcast about how the rural landscape, especially the Midwestern United States, was changed from raw, wild land to a place suitable for agriculture. In the brief introduction of this podcast, Dr. David Lanergren introduces the idea of how the Midwest environment was reconstructed and what tools aided in that process. David Lanergan is a professor of geography at McAllister College and the director of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Rhoda Hubbard Anderson follows this brief introduction with in-depth detail about what roles the plows and fences had of those days in transforming the Midwestern rural landscape. Her information comes from a manuscript written by Dr. Lanergan. Rhoda Hubbard Anderson is a master teacher who teaches in the Hutchinson, Minnesota public school system. Rhoda holds a master's degree and has taught for over 15 years. She is well known as a presenter about professional learning communities and differentiated instruction. You are listening to a podcast from the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. MAGE is a nonprofit organization of teachers and others dedicated to improving the quality of geographic instruction and learning in the state of Minnesota. This podcast contains visuals, clickable links, and chapter controls which are useful support for the verbal content. However, some devices and browsers do not show these features. I'm Fred Kunze, a member of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. One of the most important forces in the shaping of the landscape all around the world is agriculture. Agriculture, of course, takes different forms, but here in the United States, we can think of it as a primary activity of of reconstructing an environment, basically creative deconstruction. So the early environment was transformed by the farmers and, of course, ranchers. Two critical elements helped create the landscape of agriculture that is so predominant in the American Midwest, the plow and the fence. What follows is a discussion of the important role of the John Deere plow and the barbed wire fence, both inventions from Illinois and have had great impact all around the world. In order for the agricultural settlers to prosper, they had to convert the oak savanna and long grass prairies to cropland. The prairie sod first had to be broken and fences built against the free-ranging animals. Breaking the centuries-old sod was tough work. Done by hand in the spring and summer, it was described as deviling. A team of very strong oxen would be yoked to a massive iron plowshare that weighed between 60 to 125 pounds. Only a skilled hand could plow in a straight line. John Deere, a blacksmith in Illinois, made a plowshare from saw blade steel and created a one-piece plow and moldboard. This became the plow that broke the plains. The moist prairie soil did not cling to the blade and sod was turned over neatly. Soon, thousands of farmers were using the John Deere plow and the grasslands were converted to arable soil in less than a decade. No longer concerned with breaking virgin soil, most farmers have adopted a minimum tillage program which uses chisel plows. They enable crops to be planted without completely turning over the topsoil. Sometimes called conservation tillage, this technique preserves soil nutrients and moisture and prevents erosion. The solution for the problem of providing economical fencing was solved by another inventor in Illinois. Before the Civil War, farmers were making the traditional split rail fences like those developed in Virginia. However, this fence used large amounts of timber and could not be used on the plains. The railroads made it possible for the sawmills to ship posts and boards long distances and thus made it possible to produce cheaper but less permanent wooden fences. There was a major experiment to use hedges rather than fences. Osage orange, a tough woody shrub, was promoted widely in the Midwest. Hedges took four years to be livestock proof. 
After that, they needed trimming, and of course, they shaded the adjacent soil, used nutrients, and housed lots of pests. Hedges and woven wire fences were replaced by single wire fences. At first, most people thought some sort of wire mesh or string of plain wire would work, but that failed. The single strand of wire expanded in the summer and contracted in the winter. Hanging limp in the hot sun, they were not stock-proof, and the wire mesh was plagued with rusting as well as the contraction issues. In 1874, the breakthrough occurred near DeKalb, Illinois, when two or three strands of galvanized wire were twisted around sharp barbs. Soon, a machine for making the wire was developed, and by 1900, Midwestern barbed wire was sold around the world. Scholars have argued that the barbed wire made the small homesteads on the prairies both possible and profitable. Agriculture has changed dramatically over the years. The barbed wire fences are being removed because livestock are seldom pasteurized and never allowed to run free. Dairy cattle, hogs, turkeys, and chickens are all bred in houses. During the administration of Agriculture Secretary Earl Butts, farmers were urged to plant from field line to field line, and the slime barbed wire fences were removed to get more room. When traveling through these agricultural areas, watch for fences. For the most part, they are now relics. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decorah, Iowa. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of educators and other parties who are interested in promoting an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.